Hey class, in this classroom demonstration, we're going to see how natural selection can dramatically change the traits that are present within a population. Natural selection is one of the most important ideas in all of life science, and simply put, it's that within a population, organisms have different traits. Some organisms have what's called adaptations, which allow them to survive and reproduce at higher rates than organisms that don't have the adaptations. So over time, the population tends to contain more of organisms that have the beneficial adaptations and less of the organisms that don't, simply because the ones that have those adaptations survive and reproduce better. Over time, the whole population can change as a result of some organisms having these beneficial adaptations, which is what you're gonna see in this activity. So to start our activity, we have 64 gummy bears, eight types of gummy bears, eight of each type. Students will come by and select one gummy bear to eat. They are the predators of the gummy bears. Whichever gummy bears are remaining at the end of the round will double in population. And so over a few rounds, we're gonna see dramatic changes in the gummy bear population. Okay, what you're observing right here is the students are picking their gummy bears. They are preying on the gummy bears as the natural predators of the gummy bears. And the ones that are the favorites are declining in population. We're about to see our first extinction. There goes blue. It is gone, extinct. Here's what we're ending with for a population. Now, right now, I am adding new gummy bears in. The gummy bears are reproducing asexually and doubling their population. Here's what we are going to start the next round with. Okay, here's our population of gummy bears before versus after natural selection. Notice the change in the type of gummy bears that we have in the population. Now take a look in graph form. Here's before, and then here is after natural selection. We can see different numbers of gummy bears within the population. Okay, take one more look at this starting population here. The students are gonna to begin to prey on the gummy bears again. So we're gonna repeat the same process. The students are picking their favorite gummy bears and we're gonna watch some more extinctions. Here's our first extinction of round two. We're gonna see a few more of these as they choose their favorites. There's our second extinction of round two and about to have our third. So three gummy bears just went extinct. Okay, now I'm repeating the process of gummy bear asexual reproduction. The remaining gummy bears double in population, and we're gonna see a very different population than what we started with. This is what we ended up with, with two rounds of natural selection. We're gonna take a minute to review to see what we have. This is what we started with, our initial population. After one round of natural selection, here's our change. After two rounds of natural selection, this is what we ended up with. In graph form, here's what it looks like. Here's what we started. After one round of, of natural selection, we're here. And after a second round of natural selection, we are looking like this. What a change. So to tie this back in with natural selection, the gummy bears that had the beneficial adaptation of just being not very tasty survived and reproduced at a greater rate than the ones that didn't have that adaptation. What we saw was their population changed dramatically. The gummy bears that were the most tasty, those declined rapidly and actually went extinct. The ones that were the least tasty, those populations continued to increase. So there are thousands and thousands of examples of natural selection in nature, but perhaps the best example is what happened to the peppered moths in England in the mid-1800s. So during the Industrial Revolution, the trees got coated with soot, and so in a really short period of time, the light-colored moths got picked off by the predators more easily than the dark-colored moths, and the dark-colored moths reproduced rapidly, growing their population. So over just a few generations, we saw a rapid change going from a population of mostly white-colored moths to dark-colored moths after the uh, only the dark ones are able to reproduce. Our gummy bear experiment that we did mirrors that really well. We saw that the tastiest gummy bears got eaten really quickly, and it left behind only the least tasty gummy bears. That was the adaptation that allowed them to avoid the predator humans. So I hope you enjoyed this example and uh, other teachers out there, if you want to do this in your class, it is a lot of fun. So uh, thank you for watching. Have a great day.